What is going on, peoples? Welcome to another edition of the TKO Show here on TKOTalk.com, a special New Year's edition of the podcast for you, and I, I hope it's uh, one that you will all enjoy. Enjoy uh, maybe on your uh, your trek home after uh, a late night, you wanted something to turn on and entertain you for an hour or so, maybe this is uh, what you'll turn on, and I hope it is. But this is a uh, becoming a yearly tradition here on the TKO Show. It's the Challenge Preview. The MTV Challenge is back in full force on January 6th, just around the corner, just about a week away. It's on 11 p.m. this year, which is uh, bizarre. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Live, well, no, not live. Um, it'll be live streaming to us, I suppose, but it was filmed in Panama this year. And it's uh, it's going to be an interesting one. A lot of mixed emotions, at least from my end, about the show this year. And just like the last challenge, I brought along a very special guest for all you guys. The host of Talking Challenge with Andrew Kirk, the namesake of that program, Andrew Kirk. What's going on, man? Well, actually, actually, I just changed it. I, I moved to go hang out, if, in case you didn't, didn't know. Um, it's called Big Time Reality TV. I've done it. I unfortunately left Spreecast because they started charging now and I didn't want to pay for it. And I'm on Google Hand now, so everything's going well, man. How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, we'll definitely pop some links uh, pop some links for you later on in the show. We'll get everyone uh, directed to the right places so you can hear Andrew's uh, work during the season. He does a lot of interviews with uh, challenge cast members, other challenge uh, uh, personalities. Yeah, we, had, we had so much fun, Tim, doing the free agents uh, pre preseason show that I was like that I that I got in touch with you and be like Are, we got to do this again. Yeah, it was it was a, a must. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely plan on doing it. Uh, we'd, we would have done it a little a couple uh, maybe last week or the week before, but a lot of uh, scheduling shenanigans. Of course, the holidays is a busy time for everybody, so uh, I did want to get it out now that we have a uh, a week to go. Might be a little too close, but hey. You guys are going to be able to listen to it and enjoy it. And even if it's a couple weeks into the challenge, I think you'll still enjoy listening to our analysis of the cast and the potential format and so forth. So let's get it cracking here. Um, it's the challenge Battle of the X's 2. Of course, Battle of the X's 1 um, happened, I believe, last year. Double check on that. 20, 2012. All right, 2012. Just, it, seems like, it seems like last year. It seems like just around the corner. It was the Fun fact, it actually was the first season that I actually did a couple of interviews. I interviewed uh, Tyree before the season started, and then I interviewed Jasmine the week after. So um, it was the first one that I, I did. I, I mean, I didn't keep it steady till Battle of the Seasons when I had you guys on on uh, my podcast, but that was the first one I actually started doing interviews for. So. All right, so you remember well. It, it was almost uh, almost two years ago. January 25th, 2012 was the beginning Um of course, the format was bringing um, two cast members that had been in a prior relationship or had hooked up in the past or had a showmance, for lack of a better term. I believe that term's copyrighted, but um, you know what I mean. And uh, I think they're doing it again. And, well, they are doing it. And <laughs> it's just, it's not as well put together because a lot of the, uh, they, I think they used up a lot of the previous real quality uh, relationships that challenge members had known and loved. Obviously, Johnny and Camilla ended up winning the show. They had a tumultuous past. Um, CT and Diem were there. They're back again. Uh, Ty and Emily were present. Mark and Robin were some uh, some old school challenge veterans bringing brought back. You had Dunbar and Paula. It was a star-studded affair. Abram and Car Maria. You had Zito and Heather. You had Wes and Mandy, Sarah Rice was on the show. It was a star-studded affair. That was during the little bit of a resurgence, I would say, that the show had with Battle of the X's yeah. and Rivals and Battle of the Seasons, where they brought really brought in uh, some quality cast. Maybe not so much with Battle of the Seasons. But. What what I remembered, uh, Mark Mark Long, who's a great great person to talk to, um, said on like podcasts. The reason why they do formats like X's and Rivals is because and the reason why they won't do like a Gauntlet or Inferno ever again is because they, we, for people who just tune in for the first time, they know why certain people aren't together because okay, okay, he, those two hooked up, so they're on, they're on a team. So 
I, I, I like that they're bringing it back. Obviously, with the whole real world explosion thing happening earlier earlier this year, it was pretty much a given that season twenty six was going to be X's two. Yeah, and it makes a lot of self sense. It's very self explanatory. It's me, it, it's easy to to get into. It's easy to um, to understand. You know, everyone's had girlfriends or ex girlfriends, and, and having to interact with them when your you know your time has passed in terms of being in a relationship or being a hookup or whatever. It's very awkward and you know bizarre to to see one another, to get along, and to be forced to work together in this scenario. Let so, me ask you. Let me ask you something though, before we get into the cast. Um, the biggest thing that we the biggest twist as far as this cast goes is something that I love. Uh, we have a show from MTV, Are You the One, joining the challenge. A lot of, like, true challenge fans that I follow on, that follow me or I follow on Twitter aren't very happy about this. Um, I, I, I love it. I feel like they need to do this. I mean, we, we need more young, 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 we need more of a young demographic on this show. Um, what's your thoughts, man? I mean, I understand it for sure. I wasn't surprised when I read it. It seems like they, you know, they've been talking about this and, and thinking about it for a while. A lot of people in the in the challenge um, challenge uh, universe have been speculating and and you know asking, oh, should we bring people from you know back when Jersey Shore was hot, back when um, you know like. There was, you know, Teen Mom was brought up. Obviously, that would never happen just because of uh, their... They'd be, they be asking for so much more money. You know? yeah, not to, mean... yeah, not to mention they're just a lot younger than a lot of these a lot of these cast members, and it just wouldn't be uh, fair in terms of athleticism or anything. But, you know, Are You The One is kind of a perfect kind of age group. It's the same kind of demographic. It's a lot of crossover demographics, I would say. So it made sense. I mean, me personally, it's just more people on the show that I don't know because I'm, I don't watch that show. Um, so, you know, with the, the, the current crop of real worlders, I don't really know either with the explosion or, you know, whatever last year, yeah, last year, two years yeah, ago, yeah. it was, it was uh-huh. Portland that I didn't really watch. I mean, I, I pop in here and there for some real world episodes, but it's not like I know these casts extremely I, well. I, I've spoken with ten, with 10, Ten of the are you the one cast members in two seasons, and all the ones I speak to are very like uh, open about joining the challenge. They wanna they wanna continue the reality TV TV run. I mean, obviously they're not gonna put them on another are you the one season. I mean, that'd be cool if they did, but I think I think maybe may, I think with these four, uh, we'll get into it. Um, I think these four were definitely good good people to cast. Um, and yeah, I, th- I think I think it opens up a lot more. Possibilities for new formats. It will definitely help, like a rookies versus veterans type thing. You can bring a lot of going people in for rookies. Uh, potentially another battle of seasons. And yeah, I, I think it's going to be cool. It it opens the talent pool for sure. And what was uh, kind of dwindling, you know, I think battle of the seasons was the was the pinnacle of it in terms of just like lack of real um, real like interesting characters. Like some of those characters did evolve, like. Frank and Zach really took off with that season and a couple others, um, you know, moved on from there. You know, I feel like Alton's character took a big hit on that season. But just in terms of, like, developing, like, anything else, like any other TV drama or, um, you know, a reality show or anything, you want interesting new characters. You want new guys to come in, even, you know, to even to movies. Like, all, I mean, these, all these Marvel movies that come out every, you know, every movie that all these new Marvel movies that come out every different one has different characters and the idea and the the goal of these directors or these producers is to make people care about them and to introduce them and then they maybe they can spin off on their own shows it's the same thing here you know we need yeah I, new... I mean this this and this will be the last thing I say before before we move on uh, we all know we both you know we both love uh, road rules cast members like Derek Susie um, Rachel Mark but it looks like more than likely that most of them are done. So for them to bring Are You the One on, I think it's definitely a good thing for that reason. Yeah. And as much as we'd all love to see all those, you know, old, older cast members, um, you know, from seasons past come back and, you know, fan favorites of ours, like you mentioned, it's just not 
totally feasible anymore. You know, a lot of them have, have kids or have real, you know, um, strenuous jobs, jobs with real concrete schedules and, and stuff like that. And you know, as many of them have opened the door and, and said that it wouldn't be totally, you know, out of their own possibility to come back for maybe one more, but the way they do these challenges now and, the, and how they churn them out every, you know, six months or so, it seemed like just as last season ended, there were already reports about, you know, people taking off for the next one. Like right after the re- right after the reunion aired, it was there was already speculation on who the next cast was going to be. So it's just you know the kind of format factory format that MCV is going to use, and now they have a whole different group of kids that can throw. I mean their, that's uh, forty that's forty one people right there, I and mean, they they had twenty in the first season, twenty one in the second. So I mean that's forty one new people to possibly bring on for future for future shows. So yeah, I'm not I'm not mad at it. No, I'm, I, I totally understand it, and as much as I, you know, don't know these people, and I'm not super excited about seeing them on my TV, as opposed to the Johnny Bananas and CTs and and Leroy's of the world, you know, it's uh, maybe they they can grow to become that next uh, the next group. And MTV likes having kids that'll just you know drop whatever they have, like oh, you know, a bunch of kids with like no real serious commitments to just drop whatever they're doing to go to Panama and to a, a reality show. So just another crop. And uh, as much as I'd like to see them just do another fresh meet to get that new crop of talent, it's, uh, it is what it is. And it's, you know, this show started with just real worlders. Eventually they brought in road rules or road rulers. What? Uh, road rulers. And uh, now they're bringing in another show as road rules is getting, well, pretty much totally phased out. So, we will see how it goes, but yeah, that uh, moves us on into the format, at least for those that don't remember, um, Battle of the X's 1 was a pretty straightforward competition, it was, um, you know, the the Dome was the name of the elimination round, the wh- whoever won the mini challenge was the power couple, they got immunity from the challenge, and uh, excuse me, from the Dome, and the last place finish went in immediately into the dome, and then the power couple got to choose another team to face them in the dome. So pretty straightforward, pretty as simple. As far as I understand, Tim, I think that's how they're going to do it this time around. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but yeah, I would that's assume what, that's what it, that's what it seems like. You know? I would assume it's about the same, and uh, they have teased a big twist, however, in the trailer. Um, TJ says, you know, usually, along something along the lines of usually teams would be going home, and then everyone, you know, they show the reactions from everybody instead of actually showing what it is. So there's some, been some talk and some speculation that that twist is something along the lines of, from what I understand, <laughs> not that I know firsthand, but just from reading and uh, and from listening to other people's accounts of it, it's similar to a Survivor twist or some other show that maybe I'm getting confused with. It's a mi- it's a mix between uh, Survivor Redemption Island. I don't I haven't wa- I've only watched a couple. I I only watched like a couple seasons of Survivor. I just finished watching uh, Russell Hansen's season. I don't know if you I don't know if you watched it, but man, that was crazy. I watched Russell Hansen's season, and man, was he crazy. <laughs> Yeah, so basically what it is, from what I gather... It's a mix between Survivor and Big Brother, because Big Brother, uh, last two seasons they brought somebody back in, and uh, what they're going to do is they're going to have a thing online where, say one team, say, uh, let's say Leroy and Nia get eliminated first, they'll, and then and say Adam and Brittany uh, get eliminated second, those two teams will square off, and from what I understand, and what I'm guessing... It is probably like midway through. They'll, they'll have like a tournament every every week, starting the second week. They'll, they'll type people in, and I'm gonna, I'm guessing how many teams do we have? Ten, thirteen. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, four. Uh, yeah, thirteen. My guess is final seventh, final six is when we will get the re-entry. Yeah. So more or less for those that are, are aren't following is that. Teams won't necessarily go home, even though they didn't really technically go home before, but they uh, weren't allowed to come back into the, the competition, obviously. This year, there will be some sort of format to where a team or two or three or however it works 
will earn their way back into the competition, which is an interesting wrinkle if that is indeed the case. We will find it out on January 6th. Do you, do you like that? Because, I mean, it's it, it takes away the aspect. I was listening to my friend Brian's podcast on uh, Rob Has a Website. Um, he said that he wasn't a big fan of it because, I mean, it takes away the aspect of, okay, they're going home. This episode features it featured them pretty much the whole time, and uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't think. It, I, th- I think it's cool that they're going to be doing this. I mean, they're trying to pull straws, and I mean, last season with the whole kill card thing, uh, they're trying to do something to keep the to keep to keep people interested into the show. I, th- I think. I think it's going to be cool. I like it a lot, and uh, one thing. You know, that I would, be, I'm not sure if this is the case where they just tell them about that twist right away, but it would be cool if they just, you know, halfway through the show, like on the, the episode where they do bring somebody back, just say, you know, flat out, hey, by the way, there's this tournament and somebody's coming back. So they don't, you know, teams still think they're going home, going into an elimination round. Like they don't have that little bit of, redemption idea in their head that maybe they could come back. Like, they should all think that they're getting eliminated and then it's sprung on them, like, you know, episode 7, that oh, by the way, there's going to be a tournament to see who comes, like, one team or two teams are going to come back. Yeah, from, um, I just got into Big Brother this past summer and I watched, like, past seasons on YouTube and they, uh, as far as season 15 goes, which was in 2013, they didn't know that a team was coming back, so. Yeah, that's how I would do it. I just think that. Our player was coming back, and then the next year, that I, I think the cast expected it, but they weren't 100% sure, so I mean, I right. think this is cool for a one season thing. Do I see this happening every season? No. I don't. I honestly don't. Yeah, I mean, this this is pretty much how they've been doing it for the last couple of years, them being, um, you know, Murray, is that they just try little new wrinkles, and if it works, then then it works, and they move, on, and maybe they'll keep it, or if it doesn't, then they'll they'll get rid of it. It's just uh, kind of the way this this show works, and you know, let's uh, let's see how it goes. Let's see how interested and interesting it makes the game, and uh, competitors. Let's see how it affects them. So, well, speaking of competitors, let's get right into them. And I'm just going to roll down these uh, featuring um, the way that MTV.com does. And I believe it's in alphabetical order, at least from the first, uh, the male competitor standpoint. So let's start with Adam and Brittany, who uh, obviously I know nothing about because they're on Are You the One, except for what it says here on the I'll website. Yeah, uh, so this is all you. I watched their interview on MTV.com, I like how they do the one, one the a day one a day thing. Um, these two, um, Adam, one at one at the one at the booty, and Brittany was the cleaner, and w- they they made great TV on this first season. Are you one? I mean, uh, they were fighting constantly and then hooking up constantly. And they remind me a lot, and I probably do this a lot throughout this podcast, compare them to X's, X's one pairs. They remind me a lot of Leroy and Naomi, because Leroy was like, okay, I'm the man. I can hook up with any girl I want. And uh, Naomi was like, oh, you can only hook up with me. Brittany reminds me a lot of how, at least that's how I'm going to think it's going to happen. Brittany's going to be like, oh, I don't want you hooking up with anybody else. And... Uh, I think when it comes to the, are you the one of the explosion teams, this might be a team to look out for. As you obviously know, Tim, the are you the one teams are automatically going to be targets walking into this house. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no secret about that. They're going to have to fight through probably a bunch of elimination rounds. Um, I think I think this was definitely a good cast, good casting call as far as beating Murray. Uh, Bringing in an Adam Brittany. Um, I, I like Brittany. Um, she's definitely, definitely one on my radar as far as who I'm gonna bring on my show, Big Time Reality TV. Um, Adam, I tweeted this when the cast was revealed. I think people are either gonna love this guy or really hate this guy. This guy comes off as a total douche. Um, he thinks he can get any girl he wants. And uh, I don't know. How, did you see their interview on MTV.com? No, not really. Uh, he he com- he comes off very he comes off very 
DC sort of had sort of like an Adam Royer maybe. That's not a very yeah, yeah. not, I, not I, a way I, to sell me on him. I think he's as far as the athleticism goes. I think he's very. I think he'd be very good in competitions. Um, if he can keep his mouth shut, I think they can stay out of maybe a couple of eliminations early. And uh, yeah, so I think that's all I got on Adam Brady. I think they're. I think they're going to be going to be okay. All right. Well, I immediately dislike them for a the uh, comparison to Adam Royer, and two, the fact that here in this description for the team, one of the sentences, I'll just read it verbatim. However, <laughs> Adam, a self-proclaimed, quote, lion that can't be tamed, oh, fought vigorously to sidestep her aggressive advances. Um, if he proclaims himself to be that, then I will immediately dislike him, and I hope he gets eliminated very early on. Brittany yeah, uh, is, is kind of cute, so she can stick around. I, I, I think you're not going to like Adam. No. I'm just going to put it out there. I, I think he's going to remind you a lot of a, possibly like a Trey, possibly like a, Ooh. I don't know, I don't know about a Jordan per se, but um, yeah, this, 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 I don't know, he, he made, he made good TV, TV and are you the one? And I think, I think if, if they do well in this season, I think he'll get called, he'll, he, he and Brittany will probably get calls back. All right, well, uh, we'll see. The next, the next pair is um, is going to be one that we will likely talk about for a while, and that is CT and the late great DM Brown. Um, of course, anyone that really follows the challenge or is uh, aware of the challenge in any form or fashion has probably heard the terrible, unfortunate, troubling news of uh, DM Brown's passing last was it last month or two months ago at this point. Seems like yesterday I can just imagine, um, you know, going on my Twitter account and seeing a few people saying rest in peace, doing some, doing some Google searches of my own to see that it was indeed true and, uh, just, you know, being pretty devastated about it, you know, for someone that I've never, I think I tweeted this, you know, someone that I've never met personally could have such a, you know, positive effect on, on me and such a negative effect in their, in their passing, I was just totally gutted. And I think that is kind of indicative of the entire challenge community. And it was somewhat inspiring at a time of darkness to see, you know, the entire community kind of, um, united in the, in the front. Like no one had a even remotely slightly negative thing to say about her. It was only positive things. Even people that maybe didn't get along with her personally, would, you know, put out these uh, very nice and kind tweets and, and memories about her. And it's uh, an extremely, it's going to be extremely difficult to see her on the show. And, uh, you know, at least we get to see her one more time on our televisions, but in light. I don't, I don't want to give, I don't want to give anything away, but this is probably going to give anything away. Do you remember hearing like reports that she collapsed during the challenge? Yeah, I did. She was sent home. I did. Rem- I did see those. Like mostly um, after the ch- after the cast was was released, there was some um, some stuff out there about it. And that is, I mean, they're gonna have to be really careful on how they edit it. Just you know, trying to be respectful and be um, kind and and not try to be exploitive exploitive with with that. Um, and and do you, do you think um, CT gets a uh, new partner, or do you think he went home? I think it's possible. Because um, I, I have I, normal. Because I remember back in uh, Rivals two, we pretty. I, th- I, I, th- I think I knew that uh, Cook was going to get a new partner, but honestly, I have no clue if, C- if CT just goes home to be a DM, or if CT gets a new partner like Devin or Good Lord, uh, Devin or uh, Mandy. Yeah, and there's you know. Yeah, there was a chick from Portland that he kind of hooked up with last time. Um, oh, good lord! Yeah, I mean, you never know. It, it, I think a lot depends on on where they are in the game, on on the circumstances. Um, I remember hearing rumors that Siobhan may or may not be involved, which is uh, is pretty hilarious because I don't think anyone's like thought about her since she got eliminated the last time from whatever show that was. And uh, it's it's really sad because you know, everybody the CT DM story has been such a up and down 
dramatic kind of thing. It started out so strong and it kind of dipped and, and dove and, you know, how supportive he was in her, in her passing and the story about how he, he, um, proposed to her like the day of and, uh, it was, it was real touching stuff. And I don't think anyone, if CT does get a new partner, I don't think anyone is going to be able to root against this guy just after what's come out. You know, I'm one of the more, anti CT kind of people in terms of the show, like obviously not personally because I just don't know him personally. It's just about what I see on the TV, what I hear from other people about him off, you know, off the camera and off the screen and, and whatnot. But it's going to be really difficult. Ever, ever since he came back like three, four years ago, I've been, I've, been, I've, I've, I've liked him. Like before when he did the whole, Punching Davis, punching Adam. I really wasn't hit, hit the biggest fan of him, but gotta gotta give it to the man. He's he's definitely definitely one of the staples of the challenge. It was so great to see him win Rivals Two, and it, it's and it sucked to see him go out on a freaking puzzle in a free agent. So if this is his last challenge, I wish him nothing but the best. But I, I'm kind of hoping he does one more to to honor DM, you know. Yeah, that would, that would be great. Um, you know, so we know that this is, uh, you know, it's it's hard to just analyze this team from, like, a competitive standpoint and, you know, knowing what we know now and everything, but... Uh, love, love the... I, I, def, I, I definitely was uh, sad in that day in my... In my uh, like, I was talking with my family members, and they were, like, they were like, you didn't really know her, so why are you that upset? And I, I was like, I felt like I did, though. Yeah, yeah I never. I, I unfortunately never got a chance to interview her, uh, but she was somebody that stood out to me as somebody who, like, I'm I'm pretty sure pa- she uh, Pedro was just like this uh, from her world, uh, the original San Francisco. He was somebody that people rem- will remember. The uh, Dean will be somebody that people will remember twenty years from now. Yeah, for know? sure, and. and- She's done so much positive in terms of um, awareness for ovarian cancer and, and all of other um, types of, of that, you know, sort of disease and, and setting up the Medgift Foundation. And I encourage anyone that, you know, has a, a couple dollars, uh, you know, whatever to go. I believe it's medgift.com. I'll double check that. You got it. And, uh, you know, just... There's a whole section where you can kind of see the the story of, of DM, I believe, and it's uh, really touching, and, and it's going to be really difficult as, to watch. Yeah, as far as from a casting standpoint, um, I'm not mad at, that, at them for bringing CT and DM back. I mean, they have more to add from Rivals 2 as far as for what their storyline goes. Um, if they would have brought somebody like a Ty and Emily back, if they would have brought in somebody like a Ty and Emily or like uh, – Mark and Robin, it wouldn't have made sense, you know. Right. And um, just a side note, if anyone follows uh, Emily's Instagram or Twitter and, and keeps as uh, up to date with her, you know, uh, day-to-day things as I do, which I doubt is uh, many people because I'm ever, it's, it's duly noted how borderline obsessed I am with her. Um, she, uh, she would absolutely annihilate any competition st- that stepped in her way. Like, I'm convinced that she would absolutely ragdoll Laurel if they came back. Just considering how much she trains, the competitions that she does do in the off season, and just how dedicated she is to her health and fitness and just being the monster that she is. Um, and I mean that with all due respect and, <laughs> and to kindness. Um, I think if she were to come back, it would just be just a, a challenge bloodbath. Yeah, that's but probably not the that's probably not the best thing to say after we just uh, talked about the, the last couple. But you know, yeah. what I mean, metaphorically, I, I'm I'm, de- I'm definitely uh, glad to see Dium at least for a couple more weeks. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be tough, more so with Dium, uh, uh, other than the one that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Um, yeah, she will definitely be missed. Yep, and that is a, a good note to end on. Rest in peace, Dan Brown. Um, the next couple we will talk great, about. Is, great, spe- great special they aired uh, uh, early in December. I don't know if you caught that. I did, and it, 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 uh, it's, it was tough to watch, but at the same time, uh, very nice and 
Just like as, as I was saying about the tweets. Like, I, I, I laughed at all the good, good moments I showed. I mean, the whole thing with the heaven on the cliff on Duel 2, that was so hilarious. Yeah, there, there's some great... You're going to go to the Duel, you're going to go to the Duel, you're going to go to the Duel. <laughs> and then everyone was like, have fun down there. Yeah. And then crazy. and then did that a snarky laugh. There's there's been some some great memories that that she's given us and given all of her uh, her castmates and and whatnot. So uh, it's it's gonna be weird for sure, knowing what we know um, and and seeing her back on on the show. But we must uh, surge on here. And the next couple we will talk about is Dustin and Jessica, who was exclusively a showman's uh, copyright infringement aside. They um. I think we've both we've both had a chance to talk to Jessica, and she has uh, made it pretty clear that this was just a, a one thing, a, like a one time thing. They you know tried to get together off off camera, and it just didn't really work out. Next thing she knows, she uh, next, uh, you didn't you didn't watch the special last night, but um, Dustin's girl and Jessica got in a little bit of Twitter beef during the challenge. Oh, really? And uh, one quote that Jessica said, "I freaking love this girl." She's like, you gotta keep a chick on, keep keep a chick on a leash or something like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, For, as far as these two, I love them both. They're both great people. I've I've gotten the opportunity to talk to them both. I have no clue how how how, how they're gonna do because both are both are very unpredictable as how, as far as how they how they're doing challenges. Dustin's been to one final, got eliminated early on free agents, then left with an injury. So I mean, it's I I, I don't I don't know if they're going to go far, and then I don't know if they're going to go home early. It's it's very tough to say with these two. Yeah, I think I'll talk about this a little bit more as we go along through these teams. But I think a lot of it, I mean, it, this this kind of always has to you know this always is a is a huge part of things, but a lot. On this show, it's going to depend where alliances lie. Um, you mentioned the RD, the one cast members. I think they're going to have huge targets on them right away. And I think all the veterans are going to kind of team up on them. Honest, at first. Honest, honestly, Tim, if say, I hope this isn't the case, but say the RD, the one, the explosion cast members go home first, I think they're the next ones. It's possible. I mean, it's just. Uh, there's a lot of wild cards in, on this cast, and, and we'll talk about that as we I go along. The, the, I think these two are probably going to make very good TV as far as sort of how they, they're bakering and whatnot. I think I think D- Dustin Dustin's ego is so big, yeah, that it's going to it's going to drive Jessica crazy. I mean, you, you saw how Jessica was with Jordan on her original Real World season. It's going to be it's going to be nuts. Yeah, I, I enjoy watching both of them quite a bit, and uh, I'll be rooting for for Jessica TKO Show alum herself. Her, um, her red her red hair is filling in for Car Maria this season. <laughs> yes, just gotta point that out there. Yep, tagged in for sure, and I think they're gonna play up this this uh, romance a lot more than they actually it, than it actually existed, simply because it was all on camera. It's like the last sentence for the, their description. Will is or will Jessica's broken heart cause her to sabotage her chance of winning, like Dustin sabotaged their chance at love? <laughs> like they're really playing this up because from talking to her, it was not that big a deal at all. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I, uh, this will be another one I'll talk about their interview. Uh, Jessica was that Dustin was kind of playing it up in the interview, and Jessica was like, "I will be the biggest bitch this season." <laughs> Well, I look forward to seeing that. You know, competitively, I think they'll do. I think they'll do well. I think they're both underrated competitors. It just depends I, I, on. Like I said, I honestly don't know how how they're going to do. It's it's very tough to tough to tough to figure out because Jessica left early on Rivals Two, went far on free agents, and Dustin has been so inconsistent on his first three or four challenges. It's very tough to say. Yeah, and uh, they will. You know, it, it just depends where they when they end up falling in the pecking order. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of enemies on the show, so curious to see where um, where the lines get drawn. There's a ton of Portland on this cast, by the way. It's there like, it is. It's like five out of the eight of them. It's, like, <laughs> it's crazy. 
a lot of Rip City being represented here. The next uh, ki- the next group is uh, another group that I don't really know too much about, and that is uh, Jay and Jenna from Real World Explosion. Jay's um, my boy. Jay's my boy, Tim. I I don't know if you're gonna like him or not, but Jay is somebody that I've I've talked to numerous times. He did his own show on a spreecast. Um, I'm a big fan of his. I want to I want to give myself a little bit of credit. I tweeted this last night. I want to give myself at least. 0.2 percent credit for them being casted. I don't know if you you probably didn't see my interviews, but I interviewed Jay after the reunion, getting his side on things, and uh, there was something that he said that Jenna saw, and Jenna DM'd me the very next day saying, "Oh, I, I want to get my side of the story," and uh, things got pretty ugly. Wow. All right. And uh, from what I've seen in the promo. Both these two, I'm not going to say who they hook up with, but both of them are going to be hooking up on his challenge, which doesn't surprise me on Jay's part, to say the least. <laughs> yes. the, dude, the dude, I don't know. I don't. Did, how much of uh, Explosion did you see? Uh, maybe a, maybe a th- you know three quarters of an episode. If you just put oh. all like the few minutes I went in here and there and put as, it all together. As far as how MTV edits him. They added him to be like a, a, a player, being like, oh, I can get any girl I want. But deep down, deep down, and I put, I put this on, uh, they, they, their interview was posted yesterday. I feel like he's a good guy, and I feel like he's going to make a girl happy one day. But the dude's made so, the dude made so many mistakes in expo- on Explosion. And uh, this will be a fun team to watch. Uh, Jenna's the youngest one on this show. She's only 21. And... Uh, I think she might be one of the ones you you like, dude. Cause she's, <laughs> she's she's hot. Yeah, I mean that that possibility is definitely there. Um, were they like? Did they meet on the show, or were they? Oh, they were they were one of the exes. Uh, both oh, okay. both both ex pairs were the ones that uh, exes came in the house. Gotcha. All right, I wasn't sure. So <laughs> the the sentence that stands I, out to me in this in this description is. Uh, Using his swag, he'll oh, pursue God. some hookups of his own. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, you're my boy, but dude. I mean, he didn't write this. To be fair, you're, this you're was, not you're not making yourself look good. This was all MTV's writing. Oh, that, I, uh, oh I know, but this it's something that he does, and uh, dude, I hope he you changed your ways, man. <laughs> yeah, he's young. Let him let him live it out and, and give us entertaining uh, television. As we continue, another Are You the One um, <laughs> pairing is next. And I gotta say, the picture for them is pretty priceless. Um, it is John uh, JJ, I believe he goes as, and Simone. Now, this is not a couple that I would ever imagine together. Yeah, it, it surprised me too on the very first episode of Are You the One. The, they, they went after each other. John was John saw uh, JJ saw that uh, Simone was crazy and he's like you know what I don't want this and Simone was uh, very hurt by it she they got into a couple arguments during the season and uh, they're the first target man hmm. I feel like both of them I don't see both of them being very doing very well in these challenges unfortunately I love I love Simone she's definitely a firecracker. She reminds me a lot of Jasmine, and I tweeted this last night. She's like, "No, I'm not like that." <laughs> but um, she reminds me a lot of Jasmine, as in, as, as in uh, she'll say whatever she wants, whatever whatever's on her mind, and she doesn't care if it pisses somebody off. Yeah, I can and do. I think I think BMP will continue to cast her, yeah. regardless regardless if they go home first or or go home six. Just from you know the little bit that I know and have seen um, by 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 looking at them uh, at their picture on MDD.com, Tim, you gotta agree with me. They're they're definitely one of the first to go. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, there's not a whole lot of physically um, physical intimidation factor J- is low. Yeah, JJ JJ is a funny dude. Though. I feel like I, oh, when you watch the first couple episodes, you're gonna. You, I think you're gonna love love the one liners this dude comes comes up with. Uh, he's a funny dude, but from an athletic standpoint, 
he's not there. It's not there. Not a whole lot there. Fair enough. All right. So um, low, low on the pecking order for sure. So we will move on to uh, someone that I thought would be low on the pecking order last season, and that's uh, Johnny Portland or whatever they call them. And uh, his partner Avery on this I season. I love. I freaking love this team, dude. I mean, I I know a little bit about them just because of uh, from what I've um, watched a little bit that I watched of Portland, and obviously I know Johnny from from last season the challenge more so, and uh, he was a pretty endearing dude. You know, definitely one of the most underrated guys for sure from an athletic standpoint. Performed pretty well. Performed very well, I would say. Almost, uh, you know, came pretty close to winning the whole thing. Flying under the radar sort of in the beginning. Got a lot of luck from the from the draw. And uh, ended up, you know, being pretty close in the end. And this is his uh, very attractive ex-girlfriend. Or She's gorgeous, dude. On and off I mean, girlfriend, from what I understand. I mean, she's absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. She, she's a former Hooters girl. Um... No, I can't. I can't say anything bad about either of these two. Um, what I do got to say, though, and from watching the whole extra baggage thing last night, I feel like there's a lot more that we don't know about how they broke up. Because honestly, I'm totally confused by how they broke up. I thought I thought it was mutual up until the point where I've been seeing these promos, um, being like, "Oh, Avery rumored to have cheated on Johnny, and uh, Johnny hooked up with Nani on." Uh, free agents. As much as I hope, I, as much as I hope they get along well together, ooh, I don't. I don't know. I'm. I, I'm. Uh, this is the team I'm rooting for the most, though. Because I, I got, I got, no, like I said, I got nothing but bad things to say about either of them. I feel like both of them are great people, and uh, can they rekindle, rekindle things? I, I would like them to. I mean, they're both. I, 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 I feel like this was one showman that I enjoyed on the real world compared to others. And uh, we'll just have to see how they do. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is the case in a lot of these shows, especially X's and, and what I would assume X's do, is that uh, money can kind of uh, mend some broken fences. So one, was, thing jo- one thing Johnny did say on uh, the promos that I've been watching on MTV, um, she's here to prove a point rather than competing. So hmm. we'll see what happens. Yeah, and you never know. They could have just edited that from him talking about somebody else, but you never know. Um, I'm interested. They're definitely one of the couples that I'm looking at most. And uh, what, what's, by. what's crazy about this is, Tim, uh, Avery, as, as you probably have heard and seen, Avery moved to Boston for Johnny. And then after, uh, I guess they broke up two days before Donnie went to free agent. She stayed in Boston. Jeez. And I think she has a new boyfriend. And coming from someone that lives in the Northeast, maybe three hours outside of Boston, not that great. Really cold. This is Um, this is going to be good team though. I really I really like this team. I like from an athletic standpoint, they're going to be good. Um, Johnny has a lot of friends on this cast. Um, they're not going to be targets at least for the first half of the show. I agree with that, especially considering that, uh, you know, Johnny Riley's main alliance uh, last show was with Zach and um, Jordan, and they're uh, right back together again. I don't know. I, and we'll, we'll, ta- we'll talk to, about this when we get to Jordan. I think he's coming up very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Johnny, Riley, and Wes are going to get along for some reason. I, I don't know. I, I, got, I got a hunch that. Oh, God. For uh, Johnny Riley's sake, I hope that's not true. I'm, oh, I, I, got, I got a feeling that Wes is going to ban people. He, he probably watched Free Agent. He's going to ban people yeah, like Jordan, like does. Johnny, like Zach, to get bananas out of there. Yep. It's uh, definitely possible. It'll, yeah. it'll, be fun. it'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Is, yeah. The, next, is the next one bananas and not either? It is, uh, or what their, uh, what's their, what's their team name that I just saw, like, Bana- Banani. Bana- great, great name, um, great pairing, two people. I'll, I'll, I'll let you take this first, because obviously, 
and a lot of people are, a lot of people are kind of like frustrated about this team. Yeah, I, I, you know, I could understand why. When I first saw the cast together, I was like, well, who, like, who is Bananas teaming up with? And it was just kind of by process of elimination, you kind of just put them together. Um, from what I understand, from from talking to people, from listening to people, from reading stuff, this was a very one night kind of thing, <laughs> um, like an after party or a, a reunion, like post reunion party. It was a kind of a one night uh, fling, and it was pretty much over from there. And you could kind of see the tension whenever they were, you know, um, on the same challenge together. You could see it, it makes sense now that like nobody really knew about it. But going back and looking at their interactions together, they did get along uh, a lot more towards the end of the, of uh, free agents, and they did kind of become uh, closer. But you could see, like, early on in that show and, and the show before, um, there was some tension. There was some some unresolved conflict there. But that seemed to, have be, uh, to be put aside because they both kind of pushed each other towards the end of free agents, and uh, I think this is for sure the favorite. Um, Nani proved a lot of people wrong on free agents and really performed well and uh, up to a lot higher of an expectation than a lot of people had for her and really kind of um, was kind of the breakout star of, of that show, I would say. Her and Johnny Riley were kind of the um, the people that that – are now considered much higher of a level of a co- of a competitor than they were going in, and uh, uh, I think this is going to be a, a really good team, and they're going to have some enemies for sure. But yeah, I got I got to say this: Am I mad that either of these two are on the challenge now? I love I love me some Nani. Uh, Na- a good friend of ours, Naya, is uh, the biggest Nani fan ever, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm a big. Banana supporter. I'm glad he won number five last last time. But from a casting standpoint, this challenge is called Battle of the Axis. And as far as far as we know, from from majority of the teams, there's some footage that we can get, but there's nothing that we can see from Nani and Bananas because they rumored quote unquote to have hooked up. Do you do you feel like? Uh, Tim, because Bananas is such a high person on the challenge totem pole that they were like, you know what, we're 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 just gonna put him on the challenge and we're gonna be like, Bananas, pick your partner, and we'll ma- we'll make something up. I think that could be true. Um, he does carry a lot of weight with the show. He's, you know, I wrote. I wrote a whole piece on uh, the website about how I think he's the greatest challenger of all time, uh, which got a lot of heavy response from the community, so appreciate that. And uh, he was, uh, you know, I think he was given some powers, I would say. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me, but it, it reminds me of the same thing with the um, with the Frank rivalry that just kind of happened on Twitter. You know, they had barely met before that, and they never, in, they never, they never met. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's a little bit contrived, but there's a lot of stuff, you know, contrived on this. Um, and it, at, at least with the whole Camilla thing, we, I knew something about that. Like, there was a rumor for them to be in alliance with each other on Cutthroat. Yeah, there's and, there's some uh, footage that they could use, and uh, but this one we knew nothing about. Yeah, I mean. I think that almost makes it more interesting because there's the um, sort of the the mystery of the unknown. You know, I think I think a lot I of challenge fans I are interested pre- in what goes on after the cameras are rolling. Honestly, Tim, I would have preferred Bananas to be partnered up with Camille again, have them defend their title, and have Nani with uh, Kahada. Yeah, I mean that would be that would be interesting for sure. That would be, you know, two but more interesting teams. Are they the, the favorite? Are they the favorite? Like you said, I don't know. I, it's too early to tell. Like not like Banana said on this the whole trailer thing last night. They showed a clip. Um, they showed a clip of Nani arguing with some with somebody else, and 
bananas always get stuck with the emotional partners. I mean, we've seen it ever yeah. since they've been doing partner challenges, and Nani definitely gets emotional and definitely freaks out. We're guaranteed to have her freak out at least once a challenge, you know? Yeah. I mean, if I had to put money on it, I would still favor favor Johnny for sure. I think he just knows he knows how to get, you know, people past that point. You know, I don't think anyone thought that much of Tyler as a competitor going into that show. And I don't think people thought that much of Camilla going into that show. And, you know, obviously they're both solid competitors. I don't think either is fantastic. But I think he knows how to put, you know, I think a lot of the character of Johnny Bananas we see isn't necessarily what goes into him as a team player and him as a as a partner. I think he does, you know, push people. I think he does inspire them to a certain degree. And I think he his, uh the fact that he's done this so many times, you know, his veteran leadership is a huge factor. And I think now that Nani's gone through the rigors of a final challenge, her nearly winning, if it wasn't for that little breakdown she had at the top of the mountain while she was on the bike, she might have actually won. You know, she knows she knows what it takes to get to the top of the mountain, pun and no pun intended, just, you know, your own personal preference on that we, one. We shall see how they do. Um, once the rookies get whittled down and once, like, the targets, like, uh, like Dustin and Jess, um, other teams that I feel like are very disposable, I feel like like I like I said, I feel like Wes, Jordan, Johnny, and Zach are gonna all be gunning for him. This I team. definitely agree with that. Big target on their backs, not a whole lot of allies. Do I see them winning? I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna say a lowercase no. All right. But yeah, I mean, I guess now is a good time to talk about it as any. If you just look at the the outline here. There's not a whole lot of potential allies for, for Johnny here. I mean, I know him and Sarah are decently close. You know, said they're partnered with the... Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a big, uh, a big is that, thing. Is that, is that who's next? That is who's next. Um, but, you know, I can see... These two are the favorite. Definitely... I'm calling that right now. These two are the favorites. All right. Well, there you go. The next partner group is Jordan and Sarah. Of course, Jordan, um, I would say, kind of turning heel in the last season. Um, (laughs) I think some people liked him going into that challenge, and he kind of alienated a lot of people. Going into that challenge, he was just kind of the rookie that outperformed on – was that was that rivals that he outperformed or uh, rivals rivals of the seasons? I don't even rivals remember. rivals two. Okay, yeah, it was rivals two, or him and his partner um, Marlon was it? I don't know. Jay Dillinger, yep. Okay, so they um, they performed very well. They got to the final, and then he just flipped the script and uh, kind of became a real cocky. Uh, Sob and became be, became. A, let me stop you there. He's always been like that. Fair, but he. I got nothing. I got nothing but, for, but respect for Jordan Wisely, Tim. I've spoken to him on a number of occasions, but the dude is one of the cockiest people I've ever seen to be on the challenge. <laughs> well, maybe it was just more. That, that's a, it was just that's, more evident. That's a compliment. All right. Because I mean, in order. I mean, we 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 see, and especially with the, this group of guys, majority of the group of guys, we, we they're full of them, you know, mm-hmm. very arrogant, very cocky people. But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. If Jordan doesn't pull some of these top down, or gets in a fight, gets into a fight with somebody like Simone or um, some or one of one of the other. Girls of a different different racial background, they're gonna go far. I mean, I, definitely from a physical perspective, there's a lot to like here. I mean, I gotta say, I gotta, I gotta say, man, Tim, their hookup was hot. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to 
You don't have to convince me any. I'm one of the biggest Sarah Rice fans there is. Um, and, and it was it was unfortunate to see her go home so, go home so early because I would have loved to see that uh, continue. Yeah, the Sarah the Sarah's challenge curse was uh, very prevalent in that, and uh, who knows, maybe it'll happen again. Like you said, maybe Jordan will uh, get into a fight with somebody and it'll send Sarah home again, which would be just the worst. <laughs> I would feel so bad for her. If that and was shout, true. shout out, shout out to Sarah though, because I don't know if you've seen on Twitter she's actually engaged. I did, unfortunately. It is not to me, so okay. I'm a Congrats. little, a little yeah. bummed about that. Congrats to that. Uh, it seems like the Brooklyn cast is getting married to left and right here. It is the uh, the well behaved Brooklyn cla- Brooklyn cast. Surprisingly, is all <laughs> getting hitched. It's, hey, I got I got to give it some love. They're def they they they're definitely um this this team is gonna be a good team. Yeah. And who and knows? they're not they're not going home early. No, yeah, you, you wouldn't think so. But yeah. this is uh kind of, you know, growing from the Johnny Bananas point. You know, you got Jordan on here, we already talked about C T. We already you know, we know his history with with Johnny Bananas. They you know, they had almost like a frenemy type of relationship on the last challenge. Um maybe that'll Go full force into a into a uh, an alliance, you know. Considering who else is on the show, who are we talking about? I'm talking about uh, bananas and, and CT. But but you mean bananas and Jordan? No, I'm talking about bananas and CT. But it was the larger point. Oh, oh, was, okay. The larger point was that bananas has a lot of enemies on the show. Jordan included CT. Um, you know, Knight being kind of CT's. Uh, you know, right hand man. At least the last time we saw them together, um, you know, we don't know how he's going to interact I, with, with the I, I, one I, cast member. I would say something else to that CT and Knight, but out of respect for Knight passing away, I'm not going to say that. All right, fair enough. Um, <laughs> and then obviously we have Wes and Zach that have we've not we have not talked about. So I don't know, bananas could be in trouble on this season. Now that I'm, I'm kind of. I'm still going to favor him just because he always finds a way to win, and he's the greatest of all time, and I'm team bananas for life. But I just, uh, you know, if you look at this going in, he's going to have a hard time. He's going to find some way to get an alliance together and keep his name out of the the, um, the dome, but it's going to be tough. You know, he's going to have to really perform well. Cool. Who could you potentially see him align with, uh, other than the obvious one, Leroy? Yeah, Leroy is definitely the top of the list. Um, I mean, I, I know, I know, I know. I, I have a feeling Zach respects bananas from a competition standpoint. Yeah, and I think he got. I think beat, he gets along. You know, well I think he gets Johnny along Riley. with Johnny Riley and Zach. I just think that Jordan but, kind of pulling the strings. But like the great, thing. but like the great Ric Flair always says. To be the man, you got to beat the man, you know. There you go. Couldn't have said it better myself, but yeah. he, um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe Dustin. Um, I think him and Jessica get along decently well, even though he kind of teases her a lot. I know, obviously, him and DM were very um, close, so I don't know. You know, he, he always finds a way to put one together. It's very hard to see the path to that. Um, yeah. So but back, uh, back back to Jordan and Sarah real quick. Um, I don't see them going home. And, I don't see them going home at all. I think they're uh, I think they're going to the final. And then le- if they go home, or go to whatever the exile island or whatever the heck they're calling it, um, there there there's no chance any other team will beat them in the whole uh, exile island thing. Right. Bold. That's a bold statement. I like the exile with a little hyphen in between X and Isle. Island. I like it. All right, let's move on to the next team. Um, another team that we'll have to talk about with a heavy heart, um, considering that Ryan Knight has also passed away over the last uh, month or so. Thanksgiving. Almost. Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was um, a very bizarre, out of nowhere kind of thing, and I still don't think the cause of death has been determined, even post autopsy. But um, you know, I, I was, don't. I don't want. I don't want to say it on the air because it, it was. It was gross. I'm just gonna leave it at that. It was kind of a gross how he passed. All right. Well, 
I mean, there's a lot of speculation. I, I don't want to do that, but um, from what I understand, there was no cause of death determined, and uh, it's, you know, one of those things where Knight did rub a lot of people the wrong way, as opposed to DM, who was, you know, pretty universally loved, but once again, didn't see anything, you know, bad about the guy. Um, and uh, the you, you know that they had Arenis 2 on, because um, we saw in Battle of the Seasons, they were like, oh, Knight was like, I want to marry this girl, I want to get back with her, and, uh, then the rivals too with the whole catch up thing, and uh, you, you knew you knew that they were shooing for X's too, regardless of what happened on the rivals two reunion with Knight with Knight hitting Frank. Yeah, it's a very they, inter- it's they, a main, very entertaining pair for sure. They had to be on on, on together, and uh, I gotta say, I love I love Jimmy. I I've I. I've, I'm back and forth on night, but I love Jimmy. I haven't, I haven't gotten a chance to speak with her. I know my buddy Brian did, and uh, the girl's got the probably one of the best personalities that BMP's ever had. She's one of a kind. Definitely agree with that. Um, she's definitely grown on me for from where she started. I, I, I found her kind of. Um... I told. I, I watched the first episode of Free Agents uh, like a week ago. I totally forgot she was on free agents. Yeah, because she was barely she 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 went out first. Yep. And uh, I know my friend Brian said on his podcast, um, if Preston and Knight can get carried, I feel like this will be the team that people uh, competitors will be like, oh, we can beat them in the end. It's possible, and I think. And yeah. they and they could pull a Paul and Denmar from a Valley X's one and win win a challenge out of nowhere. <laughs> I feel I feel like they're going to be the one to do it. If, if a, I mean the teams that I'm expecting to win, I mean they'll probably win, go back and forth. But you see a rabbit pulled out of a hat, and it'll be these two. Would not shock me. I'm just uh, looking forward to to hearing Jimmy's accents and uh, seeing. Her, uh, she's uh, she said on Twitter she's done after this one, and I, I, I got as much as it, as much as I'm kind of upset about that. I understand the circumstances. Um, she is going through a lot right now. Her and the rest of the New Orleans cast are definitely going through a lot right now because we, unlike the whole DMC, I mean, we were hoping that she was going to make it, but uh, it wasn't looking good. And this whole night thing was very unexpected. Yeah, it was very, very shocking and uh, upsetting. And once again, you just kind of see the uh, the embrace that the challenge community will will have on on a uh, case like that. And there was a lot of support for for Jemmy and a lot of the other um, the cast members that were close to him. And you know, definitely uh, wasn't the biggest uh, fan of him. You know, from a character perspective, obviously never knew him personally, but. From what you he, saw on he, TV. He did a lot of questionable things, I agree with you there. Yeah. Uh, but the dude was hilarious. Yeah. I mean. He was still very entertaining and very. Um, I mean, as tasteless as that whole Marlin thing was, you, you got to make you, you, you it, was, it, was, it, was, it was kind of funny at the same time. No doubt. And he, he, will, uh, he, he will definitely be missed. And uh, like I said, I, this will be the team that people will be like, oh. Oh, they're they're not going to beat us. They're not going to beat us in the final. So we'll 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 let them stay through. And I don't see them. I don't see them getting thrown thrown in. In order for them to be an elimination, on, they'll have to get last. Very possible. So uh, rest in peace, Ryan Knight. And we will continue on here to uh, another relationship that was almost exclusively in uh, on camera. And that's Leroy and Hurricane Naya. There was a um, a very uh, disturbing piece of video where Naya was uh, interacting with Leroy's disgusting feet. Um, there was some. Um, I don't know what the girls have about Leroy's feet because I remember hearing something in Rivals too that like Camilla looked peanut butter off Leroy's feet. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's they're just—it's kind of a gross fetish that these ladies have about Leroy. 
I mean, it's, I don't know, it's just one of those disgusting things that some people are into, I guess. And there was also some uh, alleged uh, bathroom hookups that both have been uh, denied, both have been in denial of for quite a while. But they're together, and they are, uh, I think they're going to be a pretty good team. I think Leroy's never really had the best partners, whether it's Naomi or um, Mike Mike, which they did end up getting to the final. I don't know, I don't know, I honestly don't know what, if I can say they're a good team or not. I, I love Leroy. I feel like he's, he's, he's the man. He's, I feel like he's gonna win a challenge soon. Whether it be this one or the next one or two. I feel like he's, he's one that, I feel like he's, he wants to keep doing them. If the, if the time is right. As far as Naya goes, um, I was hope I was expecting more out of her on a free agents, but we unfortunately didn't get to see that because she left early. Um, this will this will be a fun team to watch though, and uh, from Naya's standpoint, it, um, I, I know I, I'm sure you know about the beef that she had with Avery, so it'll be interesting to see how she and Avery are on this challenge together. Yeah, the uh, the Rip City cast once again in full effect. See how see, how, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Naya's over the whole uh, hitting hitting uh, hitting people in the head with a uh, with a uh, blow dryers. Yeah, if not, I mean it could always make for for entertaining television. And uh, I mean I agree with what you said. We don't really know a whole lot about what Naya can do, but I was pretty impressed with her resolve against Cara Maria. Um, in that in that uh, elimination round, so I think and she, in my opinion, in my opinion, Tim, she's the one that that MTV brings on just for the simple fact that people love to hate her, you know. And she will definitely, I feel, I feel like she will definitely get get a call for the next couple because people just love hating her. And I've I've gotten the chance to speak with her one time. She was definitely very nice. Um, I had Ruthie on as my co-host for that one, and she was definitely very, very, very informative as far as how she was in that interview. Um, but she's definitely going to be the one that they cast for future seasons just for that simple fact. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Wes has made a living out of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, we can't forget about his 20 companies that are uh, clearly doing so well that he needs to keep coming on these challenges. But uh, we'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, first up do you, is... Do you think... Uh, um, I know Leroy said on the special last night that there's not going to be anything happening between the two teams because Leroy has a girlfriend. Um, do you see Naya hooking up with anybody? Um, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I don't know if I could pinpoint exactly who that is right off the bat, but... It wouldn't surprise me to see... Uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think. I don't have the cast on. I don't have the cast with me right now. It won't be Dustin. It won't be Jay. She, remind, she like... I don't know. I, I could very well see her being, like, the um, the revenge hookup for, some for like, some dude that, like, wants to make his, uh, his partner jealous. So he just will hook up with anybody. So she's, like... She, she would be the choice. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if, like, Knight hooked up with her to make Jemmy jealous or something like that. Um, I don't know what JJ's situation is, but I could see that in that case. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that would be crazy. Yeah, that, I could certainly imagine something like that happening. If, if not, as far as the team goes, it's based on if Knight can keep her mouth shut, in my opinion. If Knight can stay out of the drama... There's no reason why this team cannot make it to the finals, but if Naya starts drama with other with other girls and other guys, which it wouldn't be her, she didn't. Um, one thing I'll say about they'll, Leroy they'll that get, I'm not a huge fan of because of that. Yeah, um, one thing I'll say about Leroy that I'm not a huge fan of is kind of his his attitude towards uh, going into elimination rounds. Like he will do anything it takes to not go in there. And it was kind of like Paula in some previous seasons to where they kind of acted like the elimination round was a death sentence. You know, I, I just feel like that can't be your attitude going in. Like, you have to have a, a Car Maria type attitude where it's like, you know, whatever, send me in, it's fine. Wait, wait. 
Did Leroy have that attitude? I mean, it seemed like it. I mean, he he, he based. I mean, I, I gotta agree with you as far as how he did on free agents. He basically threw a lot of challenges just to be in the draw, which wasn't a bad strategy, but at the same time, it was out of character of Leroy. But I've never seen. I've never seen that. I don't know. It just seems like it seems like he goes into elimination rounds with a very negative attitude. Like he, I feel like you need to go in with the idea of no matter what, I'm coming back. Like, you can't act like it's the be-all, end-all. And uh, this, this doesn't even need to necessarily go for him. It can go for any of these rookie teams or whatever. It just It's a lot, of, a lot about confidence. Like, you just have to be confident in yourself and think that, you know, whether you're going up against CT or uh, Preston, you know, you, you're going to go in and, uh, and come back. Yeah. So. That's more of a broad comment than just necessarily uh, directed at Leroy, but... Yeah, just like a Dustin and Jessica pair, though, I feel like this team could go either far or go home early. Yeah, it's, I can see it, that, too. It's, it's, a, it's a mixed, as far as how I, how I see how they'll do. Do I see them winning any individual challenges? As much as I love Roy Lee, I don't think so. Yeah. They, they could just like be the one team that kind of just sneaks by and you kind of forget about them for a while. Definitely because, Leroy, Leroy, because Leroy is such a likable guy, that's probably why. Yeah, no doubt. People just like having him around. He doesn't rub really anyone the wrong way. So we'll... Uh, we'll I'm, I'm, cur- I'm curious to see how uh, him and Wes are on the show, because I don't know if you caught any of my interview, my, my interview or any other interviews with uh, Leroy. He doesn't like... He does I mean, he, 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 he likes a lot of the people on the cast, but after what happened with... Uh, West on Rivals 2. He can't stand that dude. And there's also been some uh, Leroy Teresa interactions in the past too, which could uh, which could cause a rift there. But I, I, I take that I take that back as far as for um, as them getting thrown in. If West wins, oh, who would he go for? Would he go for Leroy or Bananas? I don't know. I think uh, that's a tough. That's a tough. A lot depends. A lot depends on the power struggle. So uh, we'll get to Wes in a second. First, we have to talk about a, another real world explosion tandem, and that's uh, Thomas and Haley. Um, apparently they were high school sweethearts, and that's pretty much where my knowledge of them ends. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas and Haley. Um, Thomas, I don't know. If I, you said you caught a couple episodes. Uh, Thomas. Was dating another girl at the, on the show, Jamie, and then Haley came to the house. And, uh, I rewatched the season when it was on demand before uh, Skeletons premiered, uh, Rebel Chicago. And, uh, I gotta say, as much as, as much as I respect Thomas, uh, he came on my show two times, um, he treated this girl very bad. And in order for them to do well as a team, they they got a lot of making up to do. And uh do I see them going far? I don't think so, but you know, you never know. But what what do you think what do you think of Haley from a from a looks standpoint though? Um maybe it's just not a great nice, picture, but um nice nice eye candy. <laughs> I mean maybe it's just a picture but um it's uh it doesn't do a whole lot for me. Um maybe, uh-huh. maybe we'll see her in action and it'll be different. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But, but this is this is the one team. Uh, I was we talked about Johnny and Avery earlier. This is the one team that I actually think might actually uh, at the end of the season, if we see them on a reunion or like a special, I think this will be the team that we'll see. Oh, we're back together. All right, there you go. We move on to uh, to the aforementioned Wes and Teresa. Um, Glad, glad, glad Wes is back. It was it was weird not seeing him on last season. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know if I agree because uh, I'm not a fan, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, I, know, I, I know you love his partner. Though. I do enjoy me some Teresa Gonzalez. Um, they met on Fresh. Gonzalez. Uh, they met up. They met on Fresh Week Two, of course. Um, there was some. Uh, some power struggle, so to speak, between Kenny and Wes. That was pretty much the um, 
the storyline of that entire show, as I've illustrated in previous uh, podcasts slash articles. But the early power struggle came between Kenny and Wes for the affections of Teresa. Wes was trying very hard to win her over, and Kenny looked like he could not care less. And Teresa... This, this seemed, is one, uh, didn't mean to cut you off there, but uh, this is one team that you'll have to watch in this extra bag of special. You'll be like, Wes, you're... Uh, you're acting full. I'll, 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 do, you mind, do you mind if I tell you what, what, what Wes said? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Wes was like, oh, she was more into me than I was into her. <laughs> I'm calling BS on that. Wes, it's okay, dude. Teresa is a dime. You can you can admit that you're in there. Yeah, well that's obviously you know, that's not the actually, best way. You know you know Teresa's actually dating a guy on the Detroit Lions? Really? Interesting. I don't know I don't know if you saw her Instagram photos from the weekend because she went to uh she went to the Packers Lions game. She's wearing a Packers hat and a Lions shirt. Lions jersey is kinda of, I was, was gonna was, say was, was she's like a huge Packers fan. That's like yeah. a divisional yeah. Divisional, uh, I don't know, divisional unrest there. Uh, that's uh, that's interesting. She is on my uh, my short list of people that I really want to talk to from the season uh, throughout here on uh, the TKO I'll, show. I'll definitely be speaking with her again. I spoke I spoke with her on free agents twice and then rivals too. Um, got nothing but love for her. And uh, if if Wes has his head in the game. And not be like, oh, I want to go home early. This team's gonna go far. But if Wes doesn't give a shit about how he does, excuse, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> if he doesn't give a crap about how he does on the on the show, if he does, if he acts like how he did with Mandy and how he did on Battle of the Seasons, oh, I'm worried. But I I I, I think if he if he has his head in the right mind place, there's no reason why this team can also make it to the finals. Yeah, I mean. I'm with you. Um, I think he could just be here for the show money in terms of uh, that's a, a, a prize fighting term because most boxing and MMA uh, contracts you have your win money. Which we're well, I got a question to ask you about MMA, but we'll get we'll get to that at the end. All right. No problem. Um, where you get your win money, which obviously you get if you win the fight and then your show money, which you just get no matter what, as long as you show up. Wes looks like he could be in it for the show money um, the last couple last couple seasons, so it wouldn't surprise me if he a uh, lot of, came on A lot of that. people a lot of people are saying about Wes. He looks like he's lost a lot of weight and weird. He looks totally different from when he did five years ago on the ruins. <laughs> weird. Less less steroids, you think? <laughs> yeah, he's like he's probably cycling off nowadays. It, um, as far as from like a. Uh, entertainment standpoint, these two are going to be great because they both don't like each other, and yeah. uh, it's 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 going to be great to see. Yeah, and as we've you know, I've kind of talked about as we've gone on here, it's, we're gonna ha- we're gonna have to keep a, 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 a tally mark of how many times Teresa says "shut up, Wes." <laughs> I've, I, I've I've seen like in, in interviews and uh, the promos, it's been like it's already been twice. Yeah, we'll we'll put it on the the challenge drinking game, um, but. Uh, I'm curious to see where West lies in terms of his uh, alliances. Like, does he try to just form his own? Does he try to mooch in on the Johnny Riley, Jordan, Zach potential? Um, I, I, I mean, I mean, I, I didn't see any of that like happening, like the trailers or anything. But I wouldn't be surprised, man, because um, I just got into Big Brother this season. And the the whole thing with Big Brother is uh, alliances. If you can find like a big alliance and they have your back throughout the whole thing, you're going to go to the end. And we saw it with the top two guys, Derek and Cody. They they went all the way to the end. Uh, with this one, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a power alliance with Wes, Teresa, Zach, John A, um, Johnny, Johnny and Avery, more so Johnny, and uh, Wes. Uh, the, those four teams trying to be like, okay, Bananas won five challenges. He's the winningest challenger in challenge history. Like I said, to be the man, you got to beat the man. I, I see, I see it happening, man. Yeah, it, and would I be mad? Would I be mad at that power alliance or not? Because I, I think it would be, I think it would be good TV. 
It would certainly be interesting, although I think if Wes and Jordan are in the same room for too long, the room just might explode with, you know, um, cockiness I mean, and Jordan, assholeness. Jordan took Wes, Wes is a place as a villain last season, so. It's true. It'd be like the the Joker and the Riddler teaming up against uh, against Batman. It's uh, it's interesting, and uh, you know I don't know where the the ducks are gonna ducks are gonna fall, and bananas certainly could end up becoming um, sort of the Kenny of Fresh Meat Two and just picking apart this super monster alliance by himself because from a physical. I, I mean, he'll have better. At it. Wes, Wes's alliance, Fresh Meat too. That was kind of a bad alliance, in my opinion. With a, I mean, you had Landon who was too ended up winning the whole thing, but he yeah, pretty much played played both sides. Then you had CJ, and then you had a Caitlin. Oh God! No, uh, you had Evelyn and uh, and her partner, who I don't remember who it was. I think uh, the pot, the pothead. Yeah, the, the hippie guy, whatever his name was. Yeah. Um, that, that's still. One of the most impressive performances to me is uh, Kenny's performance in that because the numbers were totally stacked against him. Like two of his biggest, uh, two of his biggest alliance members were knocked off early on with um, Sarah and Paula and, and uh, also um, Darrell on that season. I believe was knocked off first also. So uh, you know that's that's getting off topic, but I love that season and uh, Kenny just. Running rough shot. He didn't end up. He didn't end up winning, but he uh, he won in my book. Anyway, so the final scene that we have here is uh, Zach and John A. Of course, they had a uh, pretty decently long relationship, from what I understand, at least you know at least a year or so, which is long for these reality relationships. Um, I'll let you take this one because I really could care less for this scene. <laughs> Fair enough, but uh, they had kind of a tumultuous ending, and now they are uh, teamed up once more. I don't know if Zach's still dating uh, Ashley. I think her name is. No, he's not. Okay, well, he's he's going through real cast members left and right. He, <laughs> he hooks up. I'm not gonna say who, but he hooks up on this. He hooks up on this challenge as well as John A. Well, I mean, if I was if I was. Uh, Thor, if I was Thor incarnate, I'd probably run a rough shot over the season I got, myself. I, I got, I got to ask you this, Tim. Uh, we see male cast members and female cast members hook up with everybody. Don't you think after you hook up with one that that's enough? Or are they just doing this for cameras? For um, camera time to get called back for more seasons? Because it's kind of, it's, it's kind of gr- gross how you hook up with certain people. It reminds me a little bit, I don't know if you've ever seen the grassy. But um, you see, high, the high school. There's certain friends. Uh, there are a couple couple friends that have hooked up with the same guys, and it's like, jeez, I, I I would feel completely awkward if I was in the same room with my ex girlfriend hooking up with a guy that I can would consider a friend. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's not that weird to me. I mean, I've had a lot of. Um, you know, if you're if you have like a big group of friends at any point, you know, even if it's like just peripheral acquaintances and, and friends mixed in there, it's just kind of natural for the guys and the girls to kind of rotate around each other. I mean, I've had um, girls that I've been into have been into my friends that have hooked up with other friends that have eventually hooked up with friends' brothers. It's just it's just kind of the way you know the world works in terms of like. You know, the way the sort of. I mean, it's just like, you know, you can only know so many people and be uh, around, you know, group, so many groups of people. And if you're kind of put in this environment, I just feel like it'd be natural to, you know. I, I got I got I got to say when it comes to Zach and John A. I would have rather seen Ashley from San Diego. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, that's obvious. I mean, John A., I guess they're trying to keep somebody in from rural Cancun because um, I'll, be speak- I'll be speaking with somebody from that season, uh, Jasmine, probably Friday, um, do my do my own little challenge for you. Um, honestly, like Leroy and I and like Destin and Jessica, I could see them in a final and I could all see them going home early. It's, yeah. it's tough to say with these two. 
Especially yes. with uh, how Zach. Zach was a total douchebag on the extra bag special last night, being like, "Oh, I'd rather go." I mean, I laughed. I laughed at this comment, but he was like, "I'd rather go to prison than date her ever again." <laughs> Yeah, Zex has this kind of grown into uh, the lovable goofball, um, you know, persona. He he's got some pretty funny one-liners. I remember in the um, in one special they had, I think it was after the last season, where they asked everybody like what they do outside the show for money, and he, uh. he, he like made like the stripper comment, which everyone like was quickly analyzing whether or not he was being serious or not, because he does have that kind of dry sense of humor, which I actually do kind of enjoy. I just think I just think he, make, he makes bad choices in terms of who he ends up aligning himself with. Yeah. I just that's, don't think he is, like, fair assumption, but I don't think he's a great judge of character in terms of, like, who he befriends and who he dates, frankly. Um, no diss to Ashley or John A or, or the other Ashley, but, no. uh, but like but like I said, I hope there's a power alliance and it includes Zach. So as much as I wouldn't care if they went home early, I kind of don't want them to because I want them to. I want this uh, potential power alliance. I mean, we don't know if this is going to happen or not, but I hope it does. I want this power alliance gun for bananas every, every week once they once they dwindle the numbers down. Also, another Zach storyline to be aware of has his cardiovascular. Um, uh, endurance improved at all because it was, uh, was pretty, pretty miserable in the last final, and that's coming from someone with some of the worst cardiovascular endurance that you'll ever see. Um, but uh, he, uh, if, uh, hopefully, he's trained properly for this one because, like you said, he he very well could make it to the final if he plays his cards right because of how you know, good he is and how, you know. What, one thing I'll give to John A. Tim is that she actually, you talk about Zach having a crappy social game. She actually doesn't have that bad of a one. I mean, she, athletically, athletically, I don't think she's one of the strongest girls on this cast. Yeah, she's really strong. But she hooks up with her A people. <laughs> yeah, and, who, who uh, did she hook up last season? Was it like, it was like someone weird, like some like weird, it was a very bizarre it was it was it was shown in the after show. It was uh, I want to say I, I want to say Isaac. Yes, that was so weird. I would yeah. never have put those two together. I, was it Isaac or Swift? No, it was definitely Isaac because they had like right. they were doing like weird like hippie things like picking flowers and like painting pictures and um. That's why these two as a couple just doesn't make any sense to me because it seems like Johnny is much more the. Free spirit, kind of chill chick. She'd be the note caller in the next Survivor. Yeah, and uh, Zach is the uh, you know pretty typical goofball jock, you know, kind of slightly a hole kind of guy. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's kind of weird that they haven't talked for two years, but they've been on the they've been in the challenge houses. Ever yeah, since. it's kind it's kind of weird that Johnny said that. It is. It is bizarre. Um, but we will see. So I guess this is the part where we pick our potential finalists. Um, I believe I don't know. Let's just do three. It could be four for all we know. But let's just do uh, let's just do a top three. Let's do four. Let's just do four. All right, fine. I mean, I'm, I mean, top three will get money, but let's just do four because I think that's what we did last time. All right, sounds good. Um, I guess I'll go first, and obviously I'm picking Bananas and Nani, Team Banani, um, as my number one seed. Um, I'll go with Jordan and Sarah in there, mostly because, uh, I love Sarah. I will go with, now this is where it gets tough. <sighs> hmm. Not mad at those picks, by the way. All right. Um, I'm going to go with Johnny Riley and Avery. I don't really know a lot about Avery, and she could be terrible for all I know, but I don't know. I just think uh, Johnny Riley's got some uh, Northeastern resilience to him. So, all like, right. Like, like I said to him, you're going to fall in love with Avery. I guess it's very, I, it's very I possible. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Yeah. <laughs> you've, you've, been, you've been right before. She's great. She's great. So, 
those are three, and then I will go with a wild card and say... Hmm. Uh, why not? I'll go Leroy and Naya. I think it's a toss-up between them, Wes and Teresa, and Zach and John A., but I'll go with, uh, I'll go with Leroy. Mostly picking with my heart rather than my head, but that's fine. Uh, as far as the teams go, I'm gonna go. I'm I'm not gonna put 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 yeah, seeds on it. I'm gonna go in no particular. Order. I'm gonna go uh, Wes and Teresa, Jordan, Sarah, Giant Avery, and then I'm gonna pick a dark horse. Who am I gonna pick as a dark horse? I'm gonna pick. Uh, I'm gonna go with an explosion pair, just because. Of, and like I said, this is my sentimental favorite, um, Jay and Jenna. All right, there you go. I'm, I, I'm, I'm team J, team JG, so I'm gonna go J and Jenna there. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Johnny and a, a Johnny Bananas and a Nani get screwed in the uh, middle. We'll, we'll see them go episode nine or ten. Wow, bold. I will. Uh, I was. Who's your, who's your dark horse? Um, I guess if I had to pick one. It would be Dustin and Jessica, okay. because I think there is potential there. I just think that luck kind of needs to be on their side. Like I need, to, I, I, I think they need to fly under the radar. I think they need to be likable. I think they need to have the right alliance and get the right kind of games. Um, maybe win a game at a, you know win one of the mini challenges at you know uh, a, uh, an appropriate time. I can see that one in the trivia one. <laughs> Yeah, something like that, to where, like, they're low on the pecking order, but that, you know, keeps them in for another week, and then they kind of slip through the cracks. I think it'll be a, 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 thing, a thing like that. So, and I hope it happens. I like I like those two guys. Let, um, me, ask you two, let me ask you two more questions before we wrap up. Uh, the sure. first one, biggest snub of about uh, Alexis uh, That's a good one. I'd have to think about that for a second. Um, I'm, go- I'm, go- I'm going with your boy, I was, I was, and I and I posted this on my blog, uh, big time rally, um, Check it out. Um, I was stunned to have them be an alternate pair because Leora and I, we didn't see nothing from them. I mean, I'm not mad that either of them were on the show, but why aren't Train Laura on the show? Why aren't the Swift and Latoya on the show? Um, those would be my two. Yeah, those are solid. Um, I don't know. I mean, I would lo- I would love to have seen, um, you know, like Laurel and Jordan, and then they could, you know, give Sarah somebody else. Um, I think that would be awesome, but I just don't think Laurel wanted that to happen at all. I think they did. I think I did read that they offered her a spot, and she didn't want to do it. I think Laurel's done. Yeah, it definitely seems that way. She wanted um, to win. She wanted to win one. And be like, you know what? I'm going out on top. It'd be cool to see like a really old school team. Like maybe, um, um, I don't know, like Darrell and somebody. I don't people, are say, people are saying here. Her, um, uh, that was another thing that people were mad that they didn't cast. Darrell and Rachel, they people are saying they hooked up on our girls. I never saw that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't remember that far back. But if they did, that'd be a great team. I would love to see it. Um, yeah. Darrell's big into CrossFit now. I think he's like a, an instructor somewhere. So he's obviously in, in great shape. He's a little bit older, obviously, but I think he would he would do awesome. If he was given and the then, opportunity. And uh, then my second question is, um, out of the four teams that you don't know nothing about, um, the explosion and uh, are you the one teams, uh, what team do you think is going to go the farthest? Hmm. I will say probably. I'm torn between two. I would probably say Jay and Jenna just because they look like the most athletic pair. I mean, I don't know anything about them and, um, you know, she yeah. seems she seems relatively athletic. Like none of the chicks really, you know, look like super, like they're going to be super into it and super, you know, good stuff. The one, the one thing I'm worried about with my boy Jay, 
is the dude is the shortest one on the cast. Is, it, is he really? Almost, I wasn't I'm sure. Almost positive. Like, dude, Denna is taller than him. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was like the picture or she was just super tall. I want to say Jay's like five seven. Really? And Jay, if you, Jay, if you ever listen to this, you can correct me. I don't care. Um, hey, that's all right. My guy Derek uh, was pretty short too, but Jay, Jay, and I, I'm torn between Jay and Jenna and Adam and Brittany. I feel uh, like both both pairs will do very well. Um, but I see either of them being put in the first elimination round and maybe coming out of that that victorious. Or do we even do we even call them elimination rounds because they're not getting eliminated? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's very weird. Yeah, and I don't know what the. Uh, I guess they'd be domes. Yeah, that sounds weird though. Yeah, um, Johnny, uh, so yeah, yeah, my picks, uh, just to re- recap them, uh, Johnny and Avery, um, uh, Wes and Teresa, Sarah and Jordan, and then Jay and Jenna. And I got Team Banani, and, uh, Leroy and Naya, and Avery and Johnny, and who's my other team? Oh, Sarah and Jordan. I'm really hope like, in terms of just general things I'm rooting for, is A, um, another Johnny Bananas win. No, two, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> and then two, Sarah not getting sent home early for some stupid reason. Jordan pulling, uh, Jordan pulling Brittany's top off. <laughs> All right. Well, if we want to get into that, yeah, sure. That's not that's not a spoiler, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. It's more of just wishful thinking, I suppose. And then uh, the one question, uh, getting away from the challenge, uh, MMA, because I know you're a big MMA guy. Mm-hmm. What do you think about UFC signing uh, Mr. F- uh, Phil Brooks, CM Punk? Um, I love it. Um, I think... The UFC has had a tough year this past year. They just business hasn't been great. They've had a lot of injuries, a lot of big fights fall apart. Um, just things did not go their way. The star power level is definitely dipped, and I think this is only going to help them going going forward. I think. What nice. what I'm I'm not big on UFC Tim. Uh, what weight class would he fall in? Lightweight, middle um, middleweight. Yeah, he says he's gonna he's gonna get down to middleweight, which is 185 pounds. Um, he probably weighs around two, two fifteen ish right now. So he wants to get a little bit slimmer. And as he continues to train, this uh, he says he doesn't want to. The the news sounds like he's not going to fight until the second half of twenty fifteen. They're saying so he wants to get a little bit slimmer. And then you know they um, what they do for those that don't know is they they cut uh, water weight right before the weigh-ins, kind of like. Um, Amateur wrestling competitions, or some like high, bo- like, like high school and collegiate wrestling. Yeah, or or some boxing fights, they do it. Not as much as they do in MMA, but what they'll do is they'll just try to sweat out all the water, and they'll you know kind of deprive themselves of water for about a day, and they'll lose about ten pounds or so. That's usually the average. It's about ten pounds of water weight, so they could fight and be as big physically as they can without having to you know um, you know lose a lot of muscle or fat mass. So I think he will probably get around down to about, you know, around 200 pounds um, of just lean weight and then probably drop the rest in water weight. Um, so I think 185 would be a good weight class for him. The guys down there are super huge, and I think he's generally a strong guy, so I don't think he should have a, a hard time with it. But a lot of Now, um, my, my question about UFC is, is it, is, it, is it as scripted as WWE or is it not? No, it's totally, you know, it's like essentially like boxing, but with more elements to it. Like it's got um, elements of jujitsu and elements of wrestling and kickboxing, and it's just sort of every martial art combined. And they fight five minute rounds, at least in the UFC, in in a cage. And uh, if you, you know, knock out your opponent or submit him with a submission hold or win a 15-minute decision as judged by three um, judges, kind of like boxing, you end up winning. And it's uh, it's very and exciting. Also, and then also, uh, I actually got the network like about a month ago. 
I, I gotta say, man, it's definitely it's definitely cool. I love it. Oh, the um, WWE Network. Did, yeah. Did you watch the rivalry thing Monday with the Hardys and? I have everything. not. My my network has been a little bit on the fritz. Um, I have to try to figure out. I've gone through a few different um, payment methods. Like, I've, I lost a, a debit card, and then I, I had another one um, get eaten by an ATM. So <laughs> I've been I've been kind of transitioning from different uh, credit cards. So my network hasn't been working very well, but it is on my list of things to watch for sure. Uh, it, it, it was a good one. But anyways... Uh... I'll let you continue. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, this is a uh, all-encompassing uh, podcast here on a all-encompassing website. So that uh, will pretty much do it. So, uh, Mr. Kirk, this is where you you plug your things. I will plug your Twitter, and that is at C S U A Kirk. So that's C S U A, all capitals, and then K I R K. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't changed it yet. I've I've had that for like a couple years now. But anyways, um, the Instagram handle is at Andrew Kirk One. Uh, the blog is Big Time Reality TV at Blogspot dot com. Really, get, I'm really getting into the CBS shows as well. Those the MTV. I did a Fantasy Amazing Race, uh, Battle Reality Stars. I don't know if you caught that. I had, I had a from the channel that had Bananas and uh, Mark Long on the team. I had a Tori Tori and Brad on the team. I had a because it was a fantasy, I was like, you know what? I'll bring the Miz back. I'll bring <laughs> the Miz and have have him be with Coral. I was like, you know what? <laughs> it's never gonna happen because um, from uh, I did an interview, I ch- talked with I don't call I don't call him interviews, I call him chats. I uh, talked with uh, Tori and he, she said that um, she wasn't that MTV people aren't allowed to do CBS shows, which I find unfortunate. But, um, yeah, because they did back when they brought the Battle of the Network reality stars back. Like, I don't even know when that was. Maybe, I don't know, probably almost a decade ago at this point. The Miz was the Miz was on it, I believe. Okay. Back, that was back. That was but back when they uh, check that yeah, out. And then my up. my YouTube, uh, just YouTube, Big Time Reality TV. Like I said, I have something in the works for probably Friday. And we've seen with that Jasmine and uh, our good buddy Ace uh, Ace Nichols, YouTube recapper. Um, and my first challenge interview will probably be next week. And I'm hoping it – I'm not going to say who I want yet, but I'm hoping it's going to be a new one. I sp- Dude, I've spoken with half the cast. Can you believe that? Very nice. Um, yeah, I want to – I definitely probably won't do as uh, as many as you do, which is why I think uh, my listeners should go check your your stuff out and uh, one of the reasons why I want to have you on here. But um, I do want to have a few of these uh, challenge interviews. I only got one done last year just to, because of timing and uh, scheduling and whatnot. I definitely try to get a few if you others. Need, if you need me to help you out, man, you know I'm here. All right. I definitely, you, know where, you, know, you know where to find me. Yeah, I definitely would want to uh, – I'm going to try to get Bananas on again, but his manager is uh, giving me the runaround a few times. So we'll, tr- we'll try that. that, that that's my uh, podcast news resolution is to try to get either Bananas or TJ. All right, there you go. My, fr- my friend Brian Cohen, uh, you guys got to check his stuff out, uh, busdriverdrop.com and uh, robhasawebsite.com. He's gotten to speak with both Bananas and TJ, so I'm a little bit jealous there. <laughs> But anyways, Tim, it's always it's always a pleasure talking to you, man. I definitely love talking challenge with you. I remember the uh, first time I got first time I heard you was on a the Derek podcast, and uh, I was like, I gotta get I gotta get this guy on. And uh, we've been we've been we've been uh, recapping challenges for about I want to say this is three years now. So it's 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 always a pleasure, man. Yeah, likewise, my friend. It's uh, it's been a fun ride. I, I do miss the I do miss the days of the old uh, the old Derek podcast. I uh, I talked to him very briefly around Christmas time, and I just, how's he do- how's he doing? Good. I just uh, you know, it wasn't long. It was kind of a quick uh, text uh, back and forth, but you know, just wished him uh, Merry Christmas and. Does, uh, does he have another kid or no? No, I'm pretty sure he just got the one right now. What a loss! What a loss am I? It's unfortunate, man, uh, to have him not on Twitter anymore. Yeah, and I, I remember him saying that he uh, he was just getting kind of you know overwhelmed with everything. He didn't really have uh, didn't really have time for it, unfortunately, because he was uh, he was very active on there and very entertaining on there. And you know, I loved 
I love those podcasts. I should I should go back and listen to some of those because there was some really good stuff on there. And he yeah. uh, he just had you know more access than anybody because he was he was he was there. He was in the mix. These uh, challengers respected him and obviously you know knew who he was and were willing to go on and talk about whatever he wanted. So. It was uh, it was a good time, good good stuff. So maybe well, I, I can. Uh, I appreciate you having me back, man. And we'll definitely we'll definitely have to do this again if you want to do like a end of the season recap, or if you want you want me to help help you coach the interview. I'm definitely more than welcome to doing it. I shall be in touch, sir, and uh, have a lovely new year. You too, man. It's definitely definitely been a lot of fun. I'll definitely talk to you soon, man. Happy New Year. All right. So thank you, everyone, for listening, and we will be back uh, very soon. So planning on trying to do some uh, maybe top tens of 2014 article coming up, maybe like top ten movies and, and stuff like that. So keep it locked, tkotalk.com. I also did a uh, podcast with my youngest brother where we talked about the holidays. It was, uh, it was a nice little podcast. It, it got, got you in the holiday spirit. So if you're feeling nostalgic about the holidays, Check that out and all the other stuff that I got uh, challenge related. Of course, I mentioned the Johnny Bananas greatest of all time. I'll link that probably somewhere on this uh, on this site, so you guys can go check that out. And uh, we will talk again very soon. TKO out. Have a good one, everybody.